In this video, I'll show you two examples on how to find the volume of solids using integrals. This is part one in the series. Now we already know how to compute area, and you can do that using integrals. But how can we somehow extend these techniques to compute the volumes of solids? To do that, you'll need to use the following formula, where the volume of a solid between two intervals, the lower limit a and the upper limit b, is defined as the area of the cross section for that function denoted as a of x dx. Let's start with question one. In question one, we're asked, find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the line y is equal to 5x around the x-axis from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2. Let's start by setting up our equation. v is equal to 0 to 2, and we will now define a of x. To do this, picture a line defined as 5x. So the slope is 5, and x is the variable, the independent variable. And I'll put a line from 0 to 2 going up. And we'll say that this line, this purple line, is y is equal to 5x. Where this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis, and this dashed line right here is my z. Because this line is rotating around the x-axis, what's going to happen is this line will form a shape that resembles a cone. If we take a slice, a cross section of this cone, what you will produce is a circle. You'll have a circle. The outer edge of that circle will be the function itself. And the area of a circle is pi r squared, where your r represents the line. And that line is defined as 5x. So if you replace r with 5x, squared, and then subsequently replace this into the integral pi bracket 5x squared, and we find the integral of this function, we will end up with the volume of this cone. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's first simplify this. The integral between 0 and 2, we have pi times 25x squared dx. We can pull out pi and 25 leaving us with 25 pi. And now we will take the integral of x to the power of 2. The integral of x to the power of 2 is x to the power of 3 over 3. And we need to find the integral between 0 and 2. So just keep that in mind, between 0 and 2. Pulling out this 3, we end up with 25 pi over 3. And now we will evaluate this function at 2 and 0. So at 2 we end up with 8, and at 0 we end up with 0. So multiplying 25 pi times 8 over 3 will give you the volume of this function. Let's move on to question 2. In question 2 they ask us to set up an equation for the volume of a solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by y is equal to cosine x and the y-axis from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to pi over 2 around the y-axis. The first thing that I'll do in this question is draw out what cosine looks like. We know that cosine looks like, and if this is my x-axis, this is my y, and this is my z, cosine looks like this, where it starts at 1, goes down to 0 at half pi, dips down to negative 1, and then back up to 1. What's interesting about this question is that they want it around the y-axis. Our function right now is in terms of x. So to make it in terms of y, I need to take cosine inverse of y, and now it's in terms of x. And the bounds that we were given were in terms of x as well. We have to convert them in terms of y. x at 0 is 1. So at x is equal to 0, we have y is equal to 1. And at x is equal to pi over 2, we have y is equal to 0. So when we set up our function, v is equal to the integral, the bounds are going to change from these two to these two. Furthermore, unlike in the previous question where it was rotating about the x-axis, this time it's rotating around the y-axis 
between these two intervals. So what we're going to form is something that looks like a cone. And it's going to be hard to imagine here, but you're going to form a cone almost. And specifically, the volume that you're looking for is this, the one that I'm going to shade in with purple. If I take a cross section from here, I end up with a circle, once again, where area is equal to pi r squared. The radius here will represent the function itself. That function is, and remember we wrote it in terms of y, cosine inverse of y. I'm going to substitute this into my integral where I end up with pi cosine inverse of y dy. Now that I've set it up, I've completed the question. And so there you have it. Two examples on how to find the volume of solids using integrals. Make sure to watch part two for some more challenging examples.